we have we have discussed then uh, three major types of polygon systems, and let's let's look uh, in four case studies, through four case studies. So let's look at each of them. So we have discussed obviously the U.S. right, which is let's look at the state is what it's a federal state. So the U.S. is a federal state, right, divided in regions, which we call states, but regions, right? And it is what? It's a presidential system. So the U.S. has a legislature, which is bicameral, one of the bodies representing the uh, people, the other one, the uh, states, the regions, and then it has an executive, which is basically vested in the president with a whole apparatus and so on. And that's, that's, the, that's the essence of the, of the US system, right? Then we have discussed a semi-presidential system, which was France, which has, let's start, uh, which is, let's start with the, with the country, which is unitary, right? It doesn't have regions. It has two houses. It has, and it has a dual executive, right? There is a president who is both head of state and head of government one, and there is a prime minister with the cabinet, right? Different. U.S., France. And then we have discussed the U.K. and Germany, and I'm going to draw them uh, one under the other. So the UK is a parliamentary, both have parliamentary system. The UK has what? Is a unitary state which has two houses for various reasons and a head of government who is what? The PM and the head of state who is the monarch. Right? Germany right, was also a parliamentary system, but the federal state with two houses, because one represents the people, the other the lender, a very strong head of government with the chancellor and the ceremonial head of state who is the president. And I'll let you look at it for a while. And these are the three models. Right? These are the three models. Presidential, parliamentary, semi-presidential. And notice that the difference between what it means to be a political system is that how the roles are different and the state organization. Because you can have a federal system, federal state, that is a parliamentary system. You can have a unitary state that is a parliamentary system. State and political system are two different things. State is how sovereignty is distributed. Political system is how the institutions of, uh, are uh, arranged. And these are two different things. But the organization of the state will be reflected in the, in, the, uh, in the institutions. You can have, for example, a presidential model in a unitary state. It doesn't have to be federal. Right? So d differentiating uh, state and political system and what they mean. Right? OK, so I'm going to erase this and then look at each model one by one or basically, or to synthesize the model so that it doesn't confuse you. But whenever you want to reference these four these three models and four case studies, you can draw these up or pull up this part of the video to kind of have a sense again of how they look. So let's, let's, let's take them one by one, right? The three major models, uh, presidential, parliamentary, and uh, semi-presidential. So the presidential system 
right? What are the characteristics? Think of the US. It's a model. Uh, that is not very popular. Well, what we have, say this is a presidential system. In the presidential system, how is, what's the relationship between legislature and executive? Well, what we have in a, in, a, in a presidential system is a separation of powers, which means that each of these, the, the legislative power, these are the powers, what are the powers? Legislative, executive, and judicial powers, right? And who do you assign this power to and what's the relationship between those institutions creates the political system? In a presidential system, there is a separation of powers, which means that the legislative power is given to one set of institutions and the executive power to a different set of institutions. So that's how it happens, right? How do you separate these institutions? Well, you assign them different powers. So in, in the US, right, the legislative power is given to the legislature, it doesn't matter if it has one or two chambers in this case. That's not the point. It's how do you, how do you separate the, these powers. So it's all given to the legislature, and the executive power is separately given to the executive. And these never shall meet. How do you make this differentiation? The other thing that you, uh, in order to make them different and independent, these institutions with different powers, right? The legislature will get the legislative power, the executive, the legislature will get the legislative power, the executive will get the executive power, right? You separate them by giving them different separate mandates, which means that what is a mandate in a democracy? The mandate comes from the people. So separate mandates means that they're elected separately. You elect separately the representatives in the legislature, you elect separately the executive. That's what gives them separate power. Um, also, they can only they can they are also removed separately, right? So distinct mandate, distinct removal, separation of powers, distinct powers for each. This this is the essence of of the uh, presidential system. Another thing that is essential here is that the the, the head of the executive is both head of state and head of government. So the executive is both head of state and head of, head of government. All the executive power is vested here. I don't care if it's called the president or whatever it's called. All the executive power, both in as representing the state and representing the running of the government, is vested in the executive. And all the legislative power is vested here, and the judicial power, of course, separately. And that's the presidential model. You separate them by giving them different powers separate powers by investing each different power in a different set of institutions and by also electing them separately. And of course there there is a, a second part of this meaning that there are also checks on each other so that they you know being that they're so independent you need to have some checks so that they don't go astray. Right? So uh, there are checks of each of these institutions on each other and that 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 means that Legislature shares in a bit of executive power, right? And it shares in a bit of judicial power, right? For example, in the U.S., the legislature approves the Supreme Court justices, right? The legislature um, has oversight over the executive. That's a sharing in the power. But the powers are separate: legislative, judicial, executive, to different institutions, and they have different mandates. Now, in a parliamentary system to go to the other opposite end. In a parliamentary system, as the name says it, all power is with the representatives of the people, which is parliament. Doesn't matter if it's one house, two houses, three or ten. Which means that, what does power mean again in a democracy? It means that, where does it come from? From the people. It means that this is the only institution that is elected in that, in that um, system. Which means that all the other functions of the government, right? There are three major functions, three major powers, legislative, executive, and judicial. All of them come from here. This is why you don't have a separation of powers, but you have a fusion of powers. Because all power from the people comes to the legislature. And then it's the legislature that delegates this power to the executive. So the executive becomes the arm of the legislature. Whether it's called the PM or chancellor, as in Germany, remember, that's the parliamentary system. This is also why you have a separation of the executive into a 
actual effective executive who is head of government and a ceremonial executive who can be, you know, for example, prime, uh, president, monarch, right? President or monarch, whatever it is, who is just ceremonial, head of state. Because he's above. The, list, the, the executive here is just an arm of the legislature. So the legislative power and the executive power is not separated. The executive power comes from the, uh, from the legislative power, or rather, from representation here, in Parliament come both powers. Parliament both makes laws and through its representatives, right, in the executive, also implements them. This is fusion of powers. And that's true in Germany, that's true in the UK. This is a system in uh, Germany and the UK. And this is why there's a separation between the effective head of government who changes with every election and the ceremonial head of state who represents the state. And that's a typical trait of parliamentary systems, right? So who is the most important uh, institution in a parliamentary system? It's the parliament. One or two houses, doesn't matter. You see, that depends on history, tradition, is it federal or not? That's a, that's a whole different thing. It's the logic that matters. This is the most, theoretically, this is where sovereignty is with the representatives of the people who then delegate it. In actuality, because with the rise of the central government, this is the curse of the modern state, the prime minister or chancellor or whatever it is has become the most effectively powerful individual actor in that system. But remember that they can be removed by the parliament at any time, right? Because they get their power from the parliament, the parliament can remove their power. Not so here in the presidential system. Because the power comes from the people, it's only the people who can remove the, the president, the, the executive. Because, and the president cannot dissolve the parliament, the parliament cannot dissolve the executive. That, that's the US. One cannot dissolve the other. Impeachment is a whole different thing. That's kind of a trial. But the mandate is separate, received separately. The mandate here is received through the parliament, through the legislature. All the power comes from the people to their representatives who then delegate it to the executive. And they can also take it back. This is why there's such a thing as motion of no confidence, confidence or censure vote. Censure vote, that's another way. But motion of no confidence is when these people, the, the representatives say, no, no, we don't have confidence for you to, we don't want to delegate this executive power to you anymore. And then the government falls. And that happens, for example, when a co coalition crumbles here. Now, the second presidential system, which is the French uh, example that we gave, is also called parliamentary presidential, so it gives you a sense that it's a mix. But semi-presidential, I like it more because, well, the president does play a more important role than the parliament. It just happens. But it is a, a mix between the two. So in a semi-presidential system, you have both an emphasis on democracy, on popular representation in the parliament. So parliament is recollected like here, and it has an effect also on the executive. But also the president is directly elect elected. This is why here the president or the monarch is not elected. Because being elected means that you're political. It means that, you know, when it's, it's party-based, right? Being elected means that it's based on the whims of the people. The monarch or the, the ceremonial president in Germany is above daily politics. It's above the moods and the, the whims of the situation. He represents the ongoing reality of the state. Here, however, you see that the president is directly elected back in the presidential system. So what's going on? Right? And yet it's not a presidential system. Why? Because there's also a head of executive proper who is the prime minister, so, who depends on the parliament, but depends also on the president, and there's a French model. So the president here is just like in the US, head of state and head of government. I said head of government one, because he sets the grand directions, but he delegates the day-to-day -day running and uh, you know the, the efficient uh, policy making to the prime minister, who is head of government too. And the prime minister is in between a rock and a hard place, because he can be removed both by the president, who appoints him, and by the parliament through a motion of no confidence. You see how the logic of the two systems meet. There is no separation of powers, right? Because 
but uh, it's in between a separation and a fusion of powers. This is a semi-presidential system. I'm going to say, why complicate yourself? Well, because you also give power to the representatives of the people who can remove the executive to a degree, but you also create a, a strong executive actor. And as I told you, uh, this is a popular model around the world because people want to be democratically represented and they want to have a check on the executive. Here you don't have a check on the executive. Here you have separate duties, right? Here the executive does come from the parliament, its, it's mandate, but also is received separately, uh, and you create a strong actor in the president. So, in a parliamentary system, the mandate is given just to the legislature, who then delegates the mandate to the executive, and can also remove the executive. It also means that the existence of the, of the cabinet, uh, and that the cabinet and the existence of the executive depends on having a majority here. Here, the executive does not depend on having a majority here because you elected Obama or Bush or whoever you elected alone. Whether this majority changes or not, that doesn't change who is in, in the president. Here it does. Prime ministers change with the change of the majority in the parliament because all the power comes from having this support. Having this support in the parliament is what keeps a government alive. Here it doesn't matter. This is why they can clash. Here they can't clash, basically, because it depends on having a majority. This is an expression of this majority. Well, what happens here? Here's a mix. And I told you that there were two types of situations in France. One, that when the president had the majority, in which case he appointed whoever he wanted, because the prime minister got the backing of the parliament. And one, when this majority was different from the president's party, in which case they imposed their own prime minister and he became more important. It's sort of a more f flexible uh, system. Note the difference. Here, because it's a separation of, of powers, all laws are made only by the legislature. The president, the executive here, has no legislative power. You can't, the president Obama cannot introduce one law, not a fraction of a law, not a, an iota of a law. Zero. All laws are made here, come from here, are passed. Here, here laws are made both here and here. And actually, because this is the executive arm, most, most laws come from the executive. It's fused. Executive are those in charge, put in charge by the legislature to, 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 to make, to drive laws. So most laws actually come from the executive. Fusion of powers. And here it is a mix, but indeed most laws come from the executive. It is uh, in, uh, fused in that sense. So in a these are the three major models. Your book also mentions the council systems and the assembly systems, but I don't need you to know that. I want you to understand the logic of these systems and to see how these are all representative democracies. And actually, this model is very rare in the world, the presidential system. And where it is, it's not really working. Brazil, Nigeria, not really working. This is very popular. This is very popular. This is popular because it creates a strong leader. This prime minister, if the parliament is very divided, it has 20 parties. Italy. Italy is a model like that. Part of God, you will never have enough, a strong enough coalition because you have 20 parties here and in order to have more than 50% to pass a law, well, this is going to be very unstable. And that's Italy. That's Italy. You know, you had in, you know, they had situations, years when government changed every few months. Why? Because the government is an expression of the majority. When the majority changes, the people in power changes change, because their the, uh, mandate comes from here. And if you don't have a majority to pass laws, you're done. Yeah? Here's a different situation. It's the president needs to, you know, he can only affect legislation, he cannot pass legislation, he cannot introduce nothing. All legislation comes from here. His authority of the president here is just to implement legislation theoretically, but he's also, because he's regulated by the population, he has this sort of a symbolic authority. So basically he gives speeches, and he kind of becomes a, a political uh, symbol. Yeah? And this is why he can persuade, he can convince people in the legislature, for example in the US, to pass law. But he can only convince them by going on TV, or by meeting with them. But he doesn't have any power. He can threaten to veto, but even that veto can be, can be um, bypassed. So that's the dynamic. Here, the president is 
the most important actor, but you also have a potentially important legislature. So your chapter also, your uh, textbook also deals with detailed descriptions of these three models. Know them, refer to both lecture and to the textbook. And this is the conclusion of the section on modern democracy. We're going to move on to talk about policy making, how countries are governed, and also participation, how the citizens participate in modern democracy.